the proposed rule, insurance companies, not churches or other religious organizations, will cover contraceptive services. No nonprofit religious institution will be forced to pay for or provide contraceptive co coverage, and churches and houses of worship are specifically exempt. I prayed for some type of substantive accommodation for a long time because this is a fight we don't want. This proposed accommodation does nothing for, say, a family-owned business like Hobby Lobby, which is on the hook for millions of dollars of fines uh, because they don't want to be forced by the government to violate the tenets of their faith. Well, it's Friday. Big things sometimes happen in Washington on Friday, and today something did. A change in Obamacare. And under the proposed rule from the Health and Human Services Secretary, Kathleen Sebelius, a change in how contraception, uh, the nonprofit religious employers will be able to opt out of Obamacare mandate for the provision of female contraceptives through their health care plans. But as you just heard, this only is the nonprofits and doesn't deal with these companies who also have sued the federal government. I think Cardinal Dolan was pretty clear in saying this is the kind of solution he was praying for. And secondly, well, that this is well, an accommodation we the, we, from an Obama administration that just won and absolutely beat the living daylights out of Republicans on a so-called war on race. Look, Juan, Obama won the election, but the reason that we have a constitution is that elections don't trump the Bill of Rights. And the free exercise of religion is what is under attack here. And all this does is put in regulatory language what was proposed a year ago by the administration as a so-called compromise. It is not. It's a farce. It's an accounting trick. Catholic University, for example, is compelled by the state under Obamacare to offer health insurance, and the health insurer is compelled by the state to provide coverage of contraceptives. So the money, the, the cost obviously is going to be shifted to back to Catholic University and its students. It's simply a gimmick. So in, it completely implicates a Catholic institution in the giving of the contraceptives, which is against its uh, religious uh, tenets. Uh, secondly, what it does is that if you are a private institution, you have no hope of any relief here. Let's say you have a Catholic layman's uh, group that runs a, a storefront or something. You are compelled and there's no exemption. But the worst part here is how they define a religious institution. Churches where you worship on Sunday are completely exempt because that would be an outrage. But the secularists at the Department of HHS have determined that religious means only the place where you go on Sunday, only a place where you worship God. But if you're a Catholic uh, soup kitchen where you are doing God's work, that's not considered religious. That in and of itself is an outrage, and I think this in, the entire issue is one that's going to end up in the courts, and I think, unless there's a, a, a major revision of the Constitution of the High Court, it will be overturned. All right, welcome back to the Friday Lightning Round. We'll start the Friday Lightning Round with winners and losers for the week. We're back with the panel. Charles. Winner is France, which in less than a month has successfully retaken all the cities in Mali from a standing start. Uh, that's uh, quite an achievement. That's French President Hollande, by the way. Uh, and the loser, obviously, is Chuck Hagel, who had one of the worst performances, I think the worst I've ever seen, of a high official nominated for the cabinet. And the auxiliary losers are the Democrats. After this humiliating performance, we're going to have to march lemming-like into voting yes. Okay, a big story that uh, is not getting a lot of attention any place else but Fox is the Iranian pastor, I mean the American pastor who's in custody in Iran, uh, Saeed Abadini. Uh, his wife was on Fox talking about how she wishes the U.S. government was talking more about this. It's unfortunate that we're hearing, um, we're not seeing a more uh, aggressive action from our government. I, and I hope that to see more of that, and not just from our government, but all over the world, because it, this is a violation of his human rights. It shows the unbelievable international double standard on intolerance. This is a guy who is just establishing Christian worship centers in private homes. He's now going to go to jail. We don't hear a word about this 
from any government, hardly a squeak out of the United States. But if there even is a hint of an offense against Islam anywhere, as with a video, which was some sort of an absurdity created by a crank, it's heard around the Okay, quickly, it's Super Bowl weekend. Picks, Charles. Ravens by three. Say again? Ravens by three. Ravens by three. Juan? Uh, Ravens by seven to 12. Whoa, seven to 12. Juan, clearly drinking some of that beer <laughs> that they had on the full screen before. See. 49ers, easily. I mean, they're the best offense in the league in the past six weeks, and the Ravens' defense isn't what it used to be. You okay. Say. I'm I think going, that, uh, I think that deer antler is getting it, though. I'm going Ravens in overtime. What? Yeah, good. Overtime game. You know, I, I, Are you going to replay this on Monday? I know. I was thinking 49ers, but I went with the closer home team. But Ravens. the real game next week is the Bear Pro-Am at Pebble Beach. AT&T. I got my money on you. You better win. All right. <laughs> I'm playing in the AT&T Pro-Am at Pebble Beach all next week. Good luck. Thank you very much. Fish Production.